we can. Yes, sir, we can. All right, there's a fountain. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath the blood to solve a guilty state. as we 
drown. And uh, that's the only stake and the only chain that that elephant has for the rest of its life. Even when it grows up to be tons uh, of force, it is held in place by a four-foot chain on a one-foot stake. And the reason is because since it was a little baby, uh, it was held captive with that chain, and so therefore it uh, never tries to, to get loose again because it tried as a little baby, it didn't work. So what's the use? You know, as uh, I look at that and I see how uh, many times society and uh, the world will tell us we're nothing, we're, we'll never amount to anything, there's uh, no hope, the devil has us chained to this world, and uh, even a lot of times once we get saved, uh, God gives us the power to break those chains, but understand a lot of people are still chained to this world because uh, they never try again. They, they've been programmed that uh, you have to sin. There is no one perfect. There is no one that's upright. Uh, all of Christianity has sinned. All of Christianity has fallen, and we get that in our mindset uh, and we say we're, we're always going to be subjected to this uh, little four foot chain and God says I've come to set you free and those whom the son sets free shall be uh, free indeed, amen. Uh, and a lot of times we're, we're like that elephant, we will uh, look at that chain and we'll remember back there years ago we we tried to quit drinking. We tried to quit doing drugs. We tried to quit doing dope. And we tried all of that and then work. And then we get saved and we say, well, I've already tried all of that. Uh, yeah, but we've got a new captain, amen. We've amen. got somebody else that's right. in, uh, in the same boat as we are. And he's uh, able to calm the seas. Uh, and I thank God that we do have the power uh, to break the chains of hell and we do have the power to break the chains of the devil uh, if we'll just do it, amen there, there's a lot in there uh, something else that is interesting about elephants is uh, if you ever notice uh, whenever they go and drink uh, they always stir up the water beforehand uh, they always make it muddy before they actually drink and I wondered about that until I finally figured out what it was is that that little elephant from very young when it would go down and drink, uh, it would look at its reflection and supposedly zo zoologists uh, say that they are so disgusted with how they look that they want to muddy up the water that way they can't see themselves in it. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times that's how the world looks at us and they've always told us we can't do this, we're ugly, we're no good. Uh, you know, what about that woman that came dragging herself on the floor probably uh, up to Jesus? Society had told her that she's no good. Society had told her uh, that there's no hope. Society had told her uh, that she's unclean. She wasn't even supposed to be there to begin with. Uh, but thank God that she reached out and touched the hem of his garment. What about that man that's laying over there by the, the gate beautiful and uh, Jesus comes in and the, the time when the angel would come down and stir up the water in the pool and whoever first was in was cleared. What about that man? Society had told him there's no hope. You'll never walk again. There's, there's never no hope uh, for you because there's no one to take you down in there. Uh, all he could hope for is to be there at the right time and just kind of roll over and fall into the pool. Uh, but thank God Jesus Christ showed up, amen. And once he stirs your waters, it's stirred for good, amen. Uh, and I thank God for that. But as I was uh, looking at animals and studying about animals, I came across uh, one uh, in Exodus. Go over to Exodus, if you would, Exodus chapter number 8. Uh, and I found some animals. You know, the Bible talks 
talks about uh, clean animals and unclean animals, those uh, what they call kosher animals and uh, those clean animals. For instance, the, the fish in the sea, uh, clean uh, fish had to have scales on it. Uh, scales, why? Because scales help uh, against fighting against pressure. Uh, you take those uh, salmons that go upstream, uh, swim upstream, uh, and they can do that because of the scales. You've never seen a catfish swim upstream. Uh, they just go wherever the current uh, sends them, and they are on the bottom. They're the vultures of, uh, um, of the sea. Uh, but as I was looking at these animals, I, I came across uh, an unclean animal uh, that many times in the Bible is pictured as unclean spirits. We see that in Revelation. Uh, three of these uh, certain class of animals comes out of the mouth, and they're, they're said to be unclean spirits. And uh, I'm talking about the frogs there in Exodus chapter 8. Uh, but let's go to the Lord, ask him to help us, and then we'll get into the message. Lord God, I come before you, Lord. I come before you unworthy, Lord. I, I come before you, Lord, as, as that elephant, Lord, that, that couldn't get away by its own strength, Lord. And uh, that was tied down to this world and anchored to this world, Lord. Uh, I couldn't do it on my own. It's only by the grace of God, Lord. And so I pray that once again, Their deeds were evil. Look there in 
of verse number 18. It says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. What does that mean? You're damned together with. Uh, that means that you're going to be sentenced and you've already had it passed. You're already damned to hell together with the devil and his angels. You're already condemned. It says condemned already because uh, he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Notice, and this is the condemnation, that light. Who is the light? Jesus is the light that cometh into the world. Uh, he says, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins. John came bearing witness of that light. He said, I am not that light. There in John chapter number 1, uh, it says he, he bear witness that he himself was not the light, but that he came bearing witness of the light. Uh, and it says, uh, and the, this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and man love darkness rather than light. Why? Because as night preachers know, because their deeds were evil. We like darkness because our deeds are evil. You know the best time to party in the world is at night time. You don't find too many uh, places open in the daytime where you can go and party and have a good time. What the world considers a good time. But it was at night and it was at that dark time of night at midnight when the party just got started in the world time. You'll remember as the night carries on and as that sun starts going up, it's kind of like the party uh, was let out. You know, the, the air was all let out of the balloon. And there, there was something that, that just said, uh, it's time to go home. It's time to rest. Uh, why? Because we were evil. We love darkness rather than light because our deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light. You want to know why people aren't packed in churches today that are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? It isn't because they don't like the Bible. They like the Bible. They like the good things in the Bible. They like the song. They like the Proverbs. They like the John 3, 16. Uh, but they don't come to church because their deeds are evil. And if they come to the light, their life has to manifest their deeds. For everyone that doth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. You open these blinds up and go down there when the sun's just right and the rays are coming in here and you can see every little particle of dust flying around. You can see the, the backs of these uh, pews here uh, as there's different, uh, you can see where people sit uh, Sunday, you know, because it's clean in that area and everywhere else it's dusty. And understand, uh, most people, and that's why you don't go into a park and they have the windows open and the lights blasting. Why? Because it's darkness and their deeds are evil. They're there to do evil. That's why most movie theaters, you go in there and the, uh, the lights are down. You can't see in front of you. All you can see is this big screen. If you could see in front of you, you'd be disgusted because it's a pigsty in there. Uh, but they don't want you to see that. Why? Because it would be manifested that their uh, love darkness. Uh, but he that doeth the truth, he that doeth truth, cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest. See, the light will reveal what your true deeds are. And the light will reveal uh, the motives behind your works. See, we, we don't care about people seeing our works. We care about them seeing our motives behind those works. We
We once were creatures of the night, but ye have been washed, ye have been purged, amen, cleansed by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Thank God that we're no longer meant to be in the night. But when we were in the night, as, as these creatures in, in Exodus say, uh, these frogs were in the night. Uh, we're there in, in verse, um, <laughs> verse 3. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly. Frogs abundantly. Which shall go up and come into thine house and into thy bedchamber. Oh, man. Talking about Mrs. Pharaoh probably had a heart attack. <laughs> and upon thy bed and into thy house of thy servants and upon thy people and into thy ovens. Man, they couldn't cook. They'd have frog legs. And if you've ever had baked frog legs, you won't eat another frog leg. Amen. It has to be fried. Get some good uh, pig lard on there and fry that sucker and it'll taste good. But they, man, that's what healthy nuts eat. Hey, man. God still says that uh, you're supposed to burn the fat, amen. Not take the fat off of there, but burn it. And into thy kneading uh, troughs, and the frogs shall come up both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. Let me ask you something. There in verse 3 it says, And the river shall bring forth frogs. It says the river there. It doesn't say rivers, right? Now, in the land of Egypt, when you said the river, what river are you talking about? <clears throat> exactly. Denial. And you know what? That's exactly where we were when we were sinners. We were living in denial. We were living in the state of denial. We thought we had it all worked out. We thought we had it all uh, figured out. We knew where we were going. We knew what we wanted. We knew what house we wanted. We knew what car we wanted. We had it all figured out. And when they asked us, uh, well, how good of a boy are you? We said, well, I'm a pretty good old boy. But we knew in our hearts that we were wicked. We knew in our hearts that we weren't right with God. We knew in our hearts that uh, there was something wrong deep down inside of us. But the problem was we were night creatures living in denial. Amen. And it's there in denial that uh, Moses comes and uh, denial brings forth these night creatures uh, called frogs, but thank God uh, that it wasn't too long. Uh, the frogs, whew, the frogs, it says, uh, I called Moses back in there, and I'm giving uh, Pharaoh a day. A day, he calls them back in there. They ask him, okay, we'll, we'll take care of your frog problem, but when would you like us to do that? He says, tomorrow, like any sane person would. Amen? Uh, and that's what we always said. We always said, uh, yeah, I know I'm wrong. I know I'm doing wrong. I know I should uh, be better. I know I should be in church. I know I should have my, my finances in order. I know all of those things, but I'll tell you what, I'll do it tomorrow. And that's just another form of denial. Why not do it today? For today is the day of salvation. Uh, put not off for tomorrow. For you know not what cometh tomorrow. Amen. Uh, we don't know what's going to come tomorrow. We don't know if we're even going to be here tomorrow. 
Why not do it tonight while there's still time, amen? Redeeming the time while it is yet day. These frogs lived in the now until Moses and Aaron shows up again. And Aaron has in his hand a rock. Amen. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking that he probably held it up and said whatever he said. Maybe, Lord, you know what Pharaoh said. So I'm asking you that tomorrow you'll get rid of these frogs. And he did, and the Bible says uh, that they were heaped upon heap, and they began to stink. Why? Because they died. You know, it was when I looked to an old rugged rod sticking out of Calvary's mouth that I died. And I began to stink to myself. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot we can learn about animals in the Bible. There's a lot we can learn about animals throughout the word of God and throughout nature. Uh, turn over to, to this animal, uh, a rooster. Looking at this rooster. Amen. 15 till 7. We're doing good. Uh, this rooster in chapter 22. In chapter 22. Uh, and if you'll see this rooster there in uh, verse number 60. It says, And Peter said, uh, Man, I know not what thou sayest. I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Just for a moment, I want to talk to you about this rooster. Amen. The preaching rooster. The preaching rooster. You know, a rooster isn't a very popular animal. A rooster, uh, as a rule, is meant for the country. I mean, you don't see many roosters in the city because city slickers like to sleep in. And uh, a rooster, what does a rooster do? A rooster, he, 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 he's not really good for eating because uh, I don't know if you've ever ate a rooster, but their meat is tough as nails. I mean, they just don't taste good. It's really not for eating. And a rooster doesn't produce eggs. You know, uh, no matter what Hollywood teaches a man, a rooster is never going to produce a little chick, amen? amen. Uh, it's always a rooster and a hen, amen? A hen, you say, well, a hen by itself can produce eggs. Yeah, but it can't produce chicks, amen? Right. And the same thing is true with us, amen? Uh, you can't produce something without having all you need. This rooster, he's not good for much, but what he can do, he does with all his might. And that is, all he's really good for is to crow. I mean, that's really all he's good for is to crow. But he does it. He does it. He doesn't have the voice of a little canary out there. Uh, he doesn't even have the voice uh, of a mocking pit, a uh, mockingbird. Uh, he, he doesn't even have the little squeak of a pigeon. Amen. Uh, this character's got a voice. I mean, have you ever heard a rooster that's just learning how to crow? It's the most god awfulest sound you've ever heard. I mean, it literally. 
rooster is good for crawling. And he says, I don't care if I don't have a good sound. I don't care if I don't have a good voice. Bless God what God did for me. I'll still sing, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. I'm sounding more like a rooster every day. <laughs> Amen. But I tell you what that rooster said. I may not be a canary. I may not be a pigeon. I may not be, I, I might not be able to sing like the rest of the birds. What, what I can do, I'm going to do with all my mind. This rooster was a better Christian than most Christians I know. See, a rooster isn't considered important in the world, and guess what? Preachers aren't either. But you know what this rooster did? His crowing isn't highly esteemed by the world. His crowing was just commonplace. It was just common. But he didn't stop it. Amen. He didn't say, well, everybody's done it, so I must. What's the use? He says, no, I am a rooster and a rooster crow. And what a Christian does is shares the gospel of Jesus Christ. You say, I am a Christian. I must preach. Preach what? Jesus Christ. What he could do, he did. And that is crow. His job wasn't considered important in the world. Nor was it considered important to the other roosters around his Little coop. I'm sure all the hens said, Would you please shut up? His crowing seemed foolish, but he still did it. I mean, what? You think about it. Here, here, this rooster is. Now let me ask you something. When are roosters supposed to crow? Crack dawn. What time is this? This isn't the crack of dawn. It's interesting. He's crowing when he's not supposed to. And preachers should be preaching when they're not supposed to. Amen? Who ever heard of you, a farmer, going out in the uh, coop saying, uh, you can't crow right now. Why, why don't you just wait until 9 o'clock? I, I just want to sleep in. It's Saturday after all. Just let me sleep in for a little while. You think that rooster's going to mind him? No. You say he may kill him. Yeah, but as he's killing him, he's going to be cock -a -doo -doo -doo. He's going to be crowing. Why? Because a rooster's crow. He's faithful. He crowed at a given time. He didn't say, I'll crow if you'll listen to me. He says, I'm a rooster, and I'll crow. Whether you listen, whether you get up, whether you go to bed, it doesn't matter. I'm a rooster, and I'm going to crow. He was faithful. He crowed at a given time, regardless of whether you listen or not. He crowed whether he felt like it, or not. He crows in the rain time and in the sunshine. A rooster doesn't take a break when it's raining out. Why? 
Why, pastor, does a rooster not take a break? Because he's a rooster. And a rooster is supposed to crow. Rooster is supposed to crow. How many preachers have taken a break? The Bible still says in 2 Timothy 4, 2, Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Be instant. He did what he could. What he could do wasn't considered important to the world, but he still wasn't ashamed of it. And he was always faithful to do what he wasn't ashamed, even though it wasn't important to the world, because it was all they could do. It wasn't popular. It wasn't like people loved roosters for waking them out of, of a beautiful sleep. Sometimes a rooster can be very burdensome because just when you get into that right sleep, just when you, you hit that right sleep, he crows. Wasn't popular. But this rooster never got discouraged. Maybe his hand griped. Maybe other roosters said, why don't you just stop it? After all, you don't even sound good. But he never got discouraged. Why? Because he was a rooster. He did his job well. Nobody had to feed him in order to get him to crow. He crowed when he was hungry. He crowed when his belly was full. He crowed. Why? Because he's a rooster. Preacher, why? Why on earth have we quit preaching just because what we preach isn't popular? He did his job well. He didn't run house to house saying uh, I, I, I can't crow anymore. All you give me is chicken feed anyway. You have to give me more. I, I can't do this. I need more. He didn't go down to the next farm and see how much they pay down there for a crowing rooster. But yet what do we have in, in preachers Many times, instead of being a rooster, all they are is hen peck and go where bigger, uh, bigger buildings, better pay, and everything else. Uh, we need to get back to preach the word. Preach the word. Why? Because the days are evil. We need to redeem the time. We need to remember that this rooster... He may have been born. You know what you did with roosters that didn't grow at the right time? You killed them. Because they weren't no good. He may have been born just for Peter. See, we go around thinking that we're going to be the next D.L. Moody. Whoever wants be him, but, okay, D.L. Moody, Billy Sunday, Spurgeon, Sherville Stern, touching millions upon millions of lives. But let me ask you this, would you still preach? Would you still get up and crow if you knew that you were born and you were called just for one person? Just for one person. We can learn a lot from animals in the Bible. We can learn there's some strange preaching animals in the Bible. You have Balaam's ass in New Numbers uh, 22, 28. The Lord opens the mouth and he preaches. 
Leviticus. You have Elijah's ravens in 1 Kings. You have the rich man's dogs that lick Lazarus' sores. You have Herod's worms. You have Noah's dove. And you have John the Baptist's locusts. But each one of them Sometimes, even though we've been saved, we go back. 